Hey, what's up guys? This is Krishna here. Welcome to this exciting tutorial on Blender 4.0 dry eyes. Now we're going to face some challenges during this tutorial and we're going to fix them along the way. Okay, without any further ado, let's jump straight in. So I have a brand new scene here. Pretty much everything is default. The first thing is I want to create a pane on the right hand side here and choose asset browser. Now I have installed Polyhaven as a browser here, which is an add-on available. And there is a video explaining how to install it, etc. And I'll leave a link in the description for that. So please check it out. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to models and I'm going to drop the brass goblets in to the scene here. I'm going to go to the front view. And by the way, I have installed keystrokes so you can see the keys I'm pressing um, on the bottom left corner here. Okay. All right, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and select that brass goblets. All right. I'm going to move this guy to the right a little bit here. Okay. E First of all, when you drag and drop models from Polyhaven add-on, it's going to come in as instances. Okay. Meaning if I tab here, I cannot edit these models. Okay. So first, what you got to do is press control and A. And now you got to select make instances real. When you do that, you can now tab into edit mode and make modifications to the mesh. Okay. So for this one, I don't need these two. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and delete them. I'm just going to keep this guy here and that's it. I'm going to make this small or even delete it. Actually, I don't need it. Okay. Now I'm going to press control shift S and selection to cursor. So it sits right in the middle. I'm going to go back to the front view and select that cube. And where did that go? It's right here. Okay. I'm, I'm going to select that to the center as well. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't know how big this brass goblet is. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of this goblet here just so that it hits this top part of the cube. And for that, I'm going to scale this guy up. There you go. That's pretty much matches up. So if you now look at this, the scale is 3.6. Let's call it 3.65. So wherever you are, you can just copy these numbers. And I'm done with this cube here. I'm going to delete it. All right, cool. We got this now. And I'm going to now add a an icosphere here. Okay. And this is obviously too big. So let's make this 0.1. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to push this up a little bit. 0.75 in the Z. So that'll be our smoke object. So let me go ahead and click on the object, quick effects and smoke. So Blender sets everything for us. Okay. And I'm also going to create a pane on the left hand side here and go to properties and select physics, pin this because we're going to have to keep resetting this type here. And I'm going to increase the resolution divisions to what, 128. Okay. And choose adaptive domain. All right, cool. We're set to run our first sim here. So you can see the smoke is rising and it is all good. Okay. But we haven't said this is a collider. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the flu here and use effector and going to check is planar. Okay. Now I just want to point out to you that this is a manifold object, meaning it is a solid object. Okay. You can see there is thickness to it, etc. However, when it comes to blender, for some reason, it <laughs> doesn't like it. All right. Anyway, so that's why it's planar. We're also going to face another issue later on with the collision. Okay. So we're going to deal with that when it comes to it. All right, cool. So let me run this again. Okay. As you can see, the smoke is rising. That's no problem there. Okay. And let me just select this guy. Okay. This is going to be a dry ice. Therefore we need it to go down. All right. So the easiest thing would be to just put a minus in here to the maximum level. Five is the maximum number. So I'm going to add a little bit of vorticity to it. You can see the uh, container is changing size. Okay. The domain, but nothing is happening. Nothing's coming out of it. And let's see what's happening here. So you will see that the smoke is being generated. Uh, faintly, you can see that. Uh, let me change it to our frame. Okay, you can see that. All right, but for some reason in Blender, the volume is getting lost. You know, if I were to push the smoke down, 
you know, here that would fill up and overflow. But that's not what is happening here. The volume is getting lost significantly. Now, I'm not sure because we don't have the dissolve enabled either. So I don't know why this is happening. But anyway, so let's just maybe this is because of the heat. And that's what I thought. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this back up to five. All right. Oops. Five. So it goes upwards. Reset it and play again. So you'll see that is coming up, which is good. And now what I'm going to do is instead of changing these numbers to negative, I'm going to go to this scene here and change the gravity to the opposite direction. And now we should see the same effect we had when we had these negative. All right. See, okay. This is to avoid any problems with the heat itself. Okay. Because the lower the heat, less of the chance that the smoke will survive. Okay, cool. So now I've, we have obviously made it different now. It still doesn't look like it's doing a lot. It just cannot come out of this. Okay. So the next step is to go ahead and introduce a velocity. Initial velocity. What I'm going to do is I'm going to re-inject that 9.81 gravity that we switched. Okay. I'm going to re-inject that back into the Z direction. And let's see if that helps. Okay, as you can see, it's definitely helped. Okay, it's obviously going up. Um, it's going going quite a bit up. But don't worry about that because we don't need time scale of one. Okay, we need 0.25 because dry ice is slow smoke. So let's go ahead and rescind this again. And now you can see this injection of Z velocity is obviously pushing the uh, smoke up so much so that doesn't even want to come down this is despite the fact we've changed time scale to 0.25 okay and that is because there's not enough initial temperature or density so i'm going to bump these both up to 10 okay and let's try it again now you can tell that it is lingering around just above this goblet here all right which is exactly what we want because that's how dry ice should behave you know what? I'm going to go ahead and increase this to 200 resolution wise. Okay. And then let's play it again. Okay. Just around here, <clears throat> you can see that there is a significant gap between this um, goblet here and the smoke. And it's also a, st a straight line here, which is no good. Okay. We're going to fix that by adding noise later on. Okay. But for the moment, there is an issue with the collision itself. Okay. For some reason, if you were to use Ace Planar, there is a difference. So if I were to put a cube up here and scale this in the Z direction, so small, okay, and push this up a little bit, okay? So effectively, this should become our collider, all right? So now I'll just multiply this guy by two so it goes up quicker, okay? So. So as you can see, this is hitting the collision object, okay, which is what we would expect. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go to solid and go in edit mode. Okay. And I'm going to choose the face. And I'm going to select that top face and delete that face. Now it is a non-manifold object, meaning it's not a solid object. Okay. It's just a thin sheet of paper or something like that. Okay. Now when you go back into object mode, and this time I'm going to select a planar because it's planar and I'm going to run this guy. And now you'll see that the collision will have a gap. You can see here. Now, I don't know why this is OK, but that's the way it is. It's for some reason, you know, I tried everything. I changed to mesh. I increased the sub steps, surface thickness, no matter what I do. And not just that, I also made this a manifold object by going to edit mode, selecting everything, uh, extrude S and pulling this in. Uh, this should technically be a, if I go to front view and press Z wireframe, you can see that this is technically a manifold object. You know, it's, it's not, I, I, I don't know. Anyway, I'm just going to get rid of all of that and go back to our previous stuff here. Okay. I'm going to create a duplicate of brass goblet. Okay. So I'm going to call this guy collider and this guy I'm going to remove 
the collider because this is our render object. Okay, okay let's just enable that render object and this will be our collider which will not be rendered. Okay, so what do I want to do with this? I want to reduce its size slightly in such a way that it's 0.02. If I bring that down by 0.02, maybe that'll be enough. So all I'm doing is I'm trying to compensate for that gap, okay? Collider is slightly smaller than Goblet and that's by 0.02. So now I'm gonna get rid of that eye here, but the Collider will still be in place, all right? Cool, so let's now check it out. I need to actually change the this back to 9.81. Okay, now at frame number 46, you can see it's slightly above, okay? So we're gonna have to bring that down even more. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is a uh, trial and error, okay? So I'm gonna just bring that down by another, oh, another 0.02, so in total 0.04, okay? So this is gonna be 3.61, there it is. Okay, at uh, frame number 46, we can see that it is still there, but we're going to fix that by adding noise. Okay, so I'm going to enable noise and I'm going to try it again. Okay, now at frame number 27, you can already see that it is doing very well. So there it is. So it is a combination of making the collider smaller than the actual object slightly, and it's a trial and error, and then adding noise. Okay, and that'll resolve that issue. Okay, cool. Let's move on. I'm going to just disable the noise for the moment and I'm going to get rid of that guy as well. What I want to do is I want to make a few changes to the, the simulation itself. So first of all, I'm going to go to Icosphere. I'm going to check all this. This is all good. Okay. In the smoke domain, which is on this side here, I'm going to enable collisions on the bottom. All right. Let me go into edit mode and push this up. So it sits right on the ground plane here, okay? And because this is gonna be a smoke that is traveling downwards, we don't need it this high, all right? Let's go back to the first, sorry, go back to the front view, G, Z, and pull it down. So I think that's good enough. Okay, perfect. The next one is I'm gonna increase the minimum simulation steps, okay? So it's gonna have to go through two at least and that'll increase the accuracy of the simulation itself. The last thing is I want to just change the smoke color to one. And this seems to have an impact on the simulation itself. Okay. All right, cool. Replay. So now you can see that these changes have made it barely come out of the uh, goblet. Okay. Uh, that's a problem for us because it's just stuck here. At frame number 28, it just can't seem to come out. Now it is filling up slowly. Maybe it'll come out eventually. Uh, let's wait and see. Okay, we're on 43rd frame and uh, this is not going anywhere. So what I wanna do is I wanna bump up this guy, okay? So I'm gonna multiply this by two, okay? So that goes up to 19.6 in the Z velocity, okay? I'm gonna try it again. Okay, we are on frame number 15. As you can already tell that it is starting to overflow, which is exactly what we want, okay? And there's lots of it, which is very good. Cool. Okay, I think we got that. I'm gonna go ahead and enable noise as well. Okay, and I'm gonna run it again. The only thing I wanna change after this is gonna be our icosphere itself because this is static at the moment. It's a standard shape. I want to change it over time. All right, so that it generates smoke differently every frame. Okay, let's just uh, try this out first before we make that change. Okay, we are on frame number 13. You can see that the collision is working nice, okay, here after we introduce the noise. And it's also starting to flow down. All right, that's good. Um, what I want to do is I want to change the strength of the noise to 0.5 because this is too much, okay? And then let's go ahead and get this texture done for our source, okay? So there's our source. I've just enabled the texture, but we need to give it a texture, all right? And that is, if I would just go into texture, clouds, you know, that's good enough. I'm just gonna choose the texture here, okay? Now that hasn't really changed it a lot, and that is because there's not enough subdivisions here. So first of all, I want to go ahead and add a subdivision surface. And I'm gonna pull this um, first, 
Now, before the fluid, I want to increase this. And then I will add another modifier and deform. And that is going to be displacement. And again, I will push this to the first. So it's the subdivision first and then displacement. And I'm going to select the texture we used earlier. And now you can see it's different. Okay. And that's pretty much it. The only other thing I want to do is go to the size. Because if you change the size, that guy is going to change. All right. So all I want to do now is animate that size. We'll go press I there to insert a keyframe and go to animation and choose graph editor and this will be already selected and go to modifiers and add noise and now that's it it's done so there is going to be subtle movements okay so if I now just disable smoke domain for a moment and enable this you can see that it's flickering like that that is exactly what I want gonna enable this guy all right Okay, cool. Now let's uh, run this guy and I'll uh, come back. Okay, we are on 13th frame here. Okay, I can already tell this is going up way too um, high uh, for my liking, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change the Z velocity again. 9.81 multiplied by 1.5. So one and a half times the gravity. Okay. Okay, I'm going to run it and come back again. I'm at uh, frame number 36 now. That looks uh, pretty good to me. Okay, maybe a little too much of uh, disturbance. Maybe we need to reduce the vorticity a little bit. I don't know. Uh, we'll check it out. What I want to do next is I want to actually go ahead and set the camera and start doing some renders. Let's check the camera here. Camera is way too far out. So I'm going to go ahead and lock the camera. And if you want to know what that is, then camera, there are your settings here. Okay. So I'm also going to add a plane here. And oops. All right, so let's do a render now. Okay, let me go to shading. I'm going to select cycles. It's going to be GPU. And first of all, I want to reduce this to 256 for viewport. And main render is only 512. I don't need more than that. Let's just go to camera view. I'm going to select that. Okay, that's what we got at the moment. First of all, let's fix the light. And I want this light to be a an area light. And I want it right above this. So it can create the contours. And press number one. And I'm going to just. Well, close enough. Okay, go back to our camera. Now you can see that creates these contours. We currently have a single light. But let's add another light here. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to. Pull this guy onto this side here and go to Asset Browser, HDR Ice, Indoor, Artificial Light. Yeah, this guy, Auto Service. I'm going to pull that guy. Okay, so we don't have really sharp shadows or whatever. What I also want to do is go back to light here and I want to increase the size of this and make this a square and increase the size to one. That way your shadows become softer because point one is too small and it can create artifacts. Okay. So the next step is I'm just going to kill this guy here. Okay. I'm going to go to plane and I want to set this up. Object. It's going to be a new one. And first thing is I'm going to go to specular and kill this IOR. So it's non-reflective completely. And the base color, I'm going to drop this down to 0.015. So it's kind of dark. Next is smoke domain. I'm just going to change this guy to one, one, and one so it's all white we still got a problem let's actually do a render first okay before i do the render i want to go ahead and change this to 50 and render region only and that just so that you know because we've enabled noise it takes longer time to load now i've tried several things but don't know how else to resolve just the loading of the geometry the render itself doesn't take that long but the loading takes a long time that's our first render okay i'm going to move on to the second slot here and let's set this up okay so first thing i want to do is i want to go to light paths and add volume so what that means is that when you have a light it's going to pass through and get scattered within the smoke okay the more number you have here the higher the render time so be careful with that i am going to have at least one all right and then next is i'm going to go ahead to the color management I'm going to change the view transform to filmic uh, because if you have AGX, you're going to have overexposure. And let's go back to light and check the light. 
power and I want this to be a little more than that 2048 or maybe even actually bring this down because I think this is way too far and I'm going to bring this guy down quite a bit there you go so okay okay let me go back to that and change it to 1024 so that's a lot better I think anyway we can change that later if we need to okay let me do a render now again okay there you go that's how it looks and the first render versus the second render okay it's obviously really bright so I'm gonna kill the brightness a little bit more maybe around 800 would be good maybe 512 okay I think that is okay the next one is I'm gonna go to smoke domain go to that guy go to render and enable velocity scale to 0.025 now I don't know why the velocity scale is 1 by default but that's just way too much so 0.025 is good and go back to the render tab again enable motion blur let's render it again okay there's our render done it took 57 seconds adding velocity blur added even more delay to the loading of the geometry that took 30 seconds in total just to load the geometry okay so it's lot 2 slot 3 and I think it's too much even 0.025 is way too much so I'm gonna half that all right 0 0.0125 okay I'm gonna leave it like that I'm gonna move on okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to this guy here and reduce this to 120 okay because I don't want any more than that I'm gonna try and get a full sim done and I'll get back to you I picked all 120 frames this isn't all 120 frames this was only frame 64 the thing is it's taking forever okay I'm not sure what happened there but uh, it, it is also a little bit faster for my liking but if I look past that it, the sim itself looks pretty good I think I also did a render um, just a test render on frame number 120 obviously I gotta change downs it's taken 5 minutes and 50 seconds for this render and out of which four minutes and 21 seconds was just to load the geometry that is insane that's way too long so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and render some frames here you know 30 or 40 or whatever and then I'll come back to you okay I uh, rendered 30 frames let's check it out and that's going very quick <coughs> the uh, sim itself looks uh, decent enough you know uh, but the problem is they had it took forever just to render 30 frames so there's something certainly wrong with this okay this is one of the challenges I faced during my experiments okay let me just uh, close this now and I've reset the cache here okay and I'm gonna run this and watch the FPS that comes up here you see it's sitting at 0.86 we're only in the fifth frame it's 0.81 I mean there's barely any smoke why is it taking you know 0 0.81 fps for fifth frame there's there's nothing going on really so uh, there's clearly a problem okay let's uh, try and fix this okay so you know this is what i figured so if i go into the domain the domain size makes a significant difference to how the sim looks how fast the sim performs and not only that this adaptive domain here is also causing a significant impact on this okay what I mean by that is that if I go into edit mode and obviously I want to make this bigger because it's clipping down here okay I don't want that obviously so what I'm gonna do is rotate it in the Z so that it fits the camera okay and I'm gonna scale it in the X and Y and not Z okay so I'm just gonna pull this out and pull this in the again move it X and Y not Z okay so that way we got something like that and if you want to know the actual size there it is okay so let's just make this 1.1 1.1 and 2.2 okay what I also want to do is this is a this is supposed to be a slow moving sim so I'm gonna drop the margin down as well because the smaller the domain size is the higher the resolution but I said that I want 200 divisions at a maximum domain size of that so your adaptive domain shouldn't matter as long as we are getting 200 divisions per voxel but I don't think that is what is happening and this could be a bug I don't know but let's play this now and you see the FPS is 3.5 
you know, that's what I'm referring to now. It's significantly different to what was happening before. And this time, it'll load faster, it'll sim faster compared to our previous try. So if you get a different result or if your sim is taking longer, this could be the reason. Okay, so I simmed 120 frames now and I've also got a, a render, okay? So you can see that the render time is only 47 seconds. Obviously, the render does not look good. The solution is that you, you want to get your domain set up first before you start your sim, okay? That way, you know exactly what you're gonna get. Unfortunately, we did it the wrong way around. So we're gonna have to go and fix this blob right now. All right, let's drop the lighting a little bit as well. 350. 350 should do it. I'm getting some artifacts here. I don't know what that is. If I say no shadow, that disappears. So there is a, an issue with the shadow here for some reason. So let me pull this up a little bit. There it is. It's gone. I don't know <laughs> what is happening. 3.5. Okay. Uh, no artifacts here. Okay. I just don't like the color of this. Okay. I think that looks uh, pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do some renders and I uh, will come back. Okay. The rendering is done now. Let's have a look. That's got the right speed and it looks pretty solid, uh, I'd say. Okay, so I want to go through the shading part because I actually thought I already showed it to you, okay? Um, but obviously I have not. Therefore, I'm going to go to frame number 120 and go through the shading part again because I, I recorded this so many times, I actually thought I did this. Um, I did it for this, <laughs> this tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and delete all this. Okay. And I'm going to press render. Okay. And that's what you got at the moment. Right. First, I don't like to use the density that is here. Okay. So I'm going to connect this guy here and call this density. And I'm going to put in a math node, multiply it by two. So you get a lot more. Okay. Let me just copy this guy, put it in here and change it to add. The more you add, the higher obviously the density will be but i want to have a minimum density of 0.5 uh, actually this is going to be 0.05 okay i just want a very subtle amount of density without it with it you can barely see the difference right now but it's okay just look at this very closely here there are some elements of smoke uh, that i don't want okay so i want to get rid of it somehow particularly Things like this will start to happen where you'll see stepping. Okay, I don't want any of that. So let me copy this and create heat. Let me do that again and multiply this and connect this factor into it. Okay, what am I doing with this? I'll show you now. Basically, we'll add another color ramp. Okay. And let me set this to default so I can get alpha. And if I start pulling this, you'll see that the smoke disappears. So watch here. You can see the smoke disappears. This is basically we're using the attribute heat to take out any density. It doesn't belong in place. Where the heat is low, the density will be gone. Okay. That's the idea behind it. So I'm going to set this to 0 0.25 because I don't want to take too much off. Just a little bit. I'm going to clamp this add as well and that's about it and the last thing you want to do is just change this rgb to 111 okay that's our material setup that's the end of the tutorial hopefully this was helpful if you liked it please give me a like a comment subscribe and also if you want to support me you can purchase the files on gumroad.com all right thank you very much until next time see ya